Vatican. The center of the religion, culture, monuments, and all the rest is associated with light and kindness. Is this really such a lucid place? Possibly not. And you'll make sure now, Infinity's with you. In this episode, I'll tell you the creepiest and most unusual secrets the Vatican hides. Before we start, I'll say that all you see in this episode are just theories. I'd like to clear up with you. I don't confirm that they're all true. In no case, I don't intend to insult the Catholic Church and believers. I just share interesting facts with you. We've cleared that up. Let's go. We start digging in the mysterious Vatican with our favorite alien subject. The Vatican seems to be a deeply religious city-state, and the existence of aliens there seem to be out of the question. But that's not the case. Even the most outstanding people of the Roman Catholic Church state that aliens exist. First things first. Several years ago, the Jesuit priest Jose Gabriel Funes, who headed the Vatican Observatory, stated that other intelligent species can dwell in the space created by God. He made an argument the believers would find difficult to argue with. After announcing that the unrecognition of extraterrestrial life is equal to doubting the superiority of God. In addition, Funes considers that some aliens can be free from the original sin and even mentions that we can take the aliens as our brothers. If these extraterrestrial brothers have one indeed, that's not so bad. It's possible to get rid of it. How? With the assistance of the Pope. In 2014, Pope Francis, who's still in office, declared that he would be ready to baptize the aliens if they came to our planet. He considers that it contradicts the Bible to refuse baptizing the aliens. That's why the church cannot withhold that if the latter want to. Maybe it was just a joke from the Pope. Well, I don't think so. What's more, I won't be surprised if he's already baptized some aliens, as well as his predecessors. Anyhow, there's a theory according to which the Vatican has known about the aliens for a long time. If the whole world first learned about the unidentified flying object, or UFO, just after the famous Roswell incident in 1947, the UFO crashed in the USA and an alien body was found, the Vatican supposedly had studied the aliens long before. The theoreticians consider that the well-informed priests from the Vatican were gathering UFO fragments, artifacts, as well as secret documents pursuing different purposes. Needless to say, the data are confidential and the church doesn't disclose them. This is no idle boast. Researches made by different conspiracists and UFOologists point at this. For example, the UFOologists named Leonard Springfield and William Cowper maintain that there's a special chapel in the St. Peter's Cathedral in the Vatican accessible only for the chosen cardinals. They were sure that this chapel keeps data about the communication between the Vatican and aliens and phenomena that modern science cannot explain. The UFOologist tried to uncover the truth and get that people knew about the contacts of the church with the aliens. However, they didn't manage to do so because both scientists passed away. Some conspiracy theorists are sure it's exactly the Vatican that killed them. Interestingly, relying on some sources of information, the Vatican prepared the same fate for dozens of curious people who tried to find out the truth. Is it a coincidence? Or the church intentionally removed people to prevent them from leaking a story the Vatican considered disreputable? It seems to me that the second option is quite possible. The UFOlogist propositions are confirmed by the findings made in the dungeons and basements of the St. Peter's Cathedral. One day, restorers were doing their job in the dungeons of the cathedral, sealed for many years, and discovered a lot of interesting artifacts. Among them were the remnants of the creature, looking more like an alien rather than a human. There's only one shot with this finding. Possibly, this is to say that the shot leaked out to the web with nobody to erase it. After all, the Vatican wouldn't have been allowed to post many photos and videos of strange content from the secret dungeons of the cathedral. This is not all. Several years ago, strange objects were noticed over the cathedral resembling the UFO. The Vatican didn't comment on this incident. Strange, isn't it? That was not a single case. Something unidentified had been registered over the Vatican even earlier. At last, there's an interesting antenna field in the Vatican. According to the official version, those are transformers that transmit radio programs of the Holy See. However, the theorists consider that their power is too high for this simple purpose. 
According to their opinion, no radio station in the world uses such transformers. Only the military and NASA have them to read information from space. I don't know if the theorists are true or not, but if you ask me, there are enough incidents in stock to give the idea oh, okay. that the Vatican is connected with the aliens. The Vatican is connected not only with aliens, but also with evil spirits. Everything seems to be just the opposite. This is literally the center of the Christian world, one of the most religious places. This is the case. But along with this, exorcism rites are frequently performed there. It's not such a secret. Those in have known this for a long time. But still, the Vatican tries not to overspread this information. On the one hand, this is logical. After all, who but for the best priests in the world can drive a devil or a demon from a man? On the other hand, many are sure that exorcism is a big relic of the past characteristic of the Middle Ages, not the 21st century. What's happening in the Vatican is striking. It's exactly where Gabriel Amorth, one of the main exorcists of the 20th and 21st centuries, used to work. This is hard to believe, but according to his words, he performed more than 160,000 exorcism rites. Beside, there were also other exorcists. You ask me, this is an insane number. Are there as many people in the world obsessed with demons? If yes, it's a shocking fact. Theorists consider that this is just a tip of the iceberg, and even more, some cover of what's happening in reality. There's a theory that exorcism is just a few of what is taking place here. One of the positive things is that it means a fight against the evil spirits. It's considered that the Vatican is closely connected with occultism and witchcraft. According to this theory, the Vatican is far not a lucid place, but the darkest on the whole planet, the center of evil. The theorists think that in its secret rooms, black and weird rites and rituals are performed with the assistance of creepy texts. I'll tell you about one of the texts later. Now we talk a little about the real Vatican, what it is actually. Possibly you've already heard somewhere about the fact that the Vatican is a rather obscene and dreadful place. However, strange as it may sound, and some memos on the subject, as they say, there's no smoke without fire, all these talks and jokes started not without a reason. Several years ago, the gentleman of the Pope Benedict XVI, Paolo Gabriel, stole secret documents of the Vatican and passed them to a journalist, Juan Luigi Nuzzi which went down into history as Vataleaks. As a result, Paolo was given a judgment and sent to prison, whereas Nuzzi, based on the documents, published the book His Holiness, The Secret Papers of Benedict XVI. In a nutshell, it revealed many secrets of the Vatican. The author wrote that the Vatican is home to dirty politics, corruption, scandals, and betrayal. Many local priests violate virtue rights and are known for their untraditional orientation. Everything like this. If you remember the Pope Benedict XVI abdicated the throne voluntarily. For those not in, there's nothing unusual in it. Here's an interesting fact. He was the first to renounce the throne for the last 600 years. In most cases, the Pope is in office until his death. Benedict stated that his age and health problems were the reason why he had taken this decision. At the same time, there is also another theory, according to which it's exactly the Vataleaks and all the scandals emerged concerning the dreadful details of the Vatican's backside, why he abdicated. Now let's come back to the dark and ancient occult texts. One of such texts is called the Great Grimoire. It's also known as the Gospel of Satan and Red Dragon. However named, it's not so important. It's essential that this is one of the most dreadful books in human history, which is considered to be kept in the Vatican. This is not a thin story or a city legend. It's certain that this book really exists, but it's not known where it is now and whether it's been preserved until now. Anyway, theorists assert that the book is placed somewhere in the secret rooms of the Vatican. The book was written approximately in 1512. Cultists and knowers of dark literature are sure it was written by somebody obsessed by a devil. Now we can find its different copies, editions, and fragmented parts. They're not so dangerous. It's the original that poses a real threat. It's considered lost and, according to one of the versions, placed exactly in the Vatican. It's supposed that the book described real methods and techniques of evoking to the earth the most dreadful creatures and demons ever existing. Along with this, the original edition mentioned a rite, according to which you could invoke a devil to make a bargain about selling your soul. Instead of your soul, you were supposed to gain the mightiest power. Who knows? 
Maybe some dreadful rituals are performed exactly with the help of this book in the secret rooms of the Vatican. As dreadful as hardly anybody would agree to perform them, they say even some black magicians having to do with this book assure that it's only those most cynical and dead-hearted who will be ready to hold the rituals. The Great Grimoire possibly lies somewhere in the Vatican Apostolic Archive right now. Despite the fact that you can find a lot of these archive shots on the internet and personally study some documents, it's considered one of the main mysteries in the Vatican. In essence, this is something like a huge library, but without public access. What's more, there are separate documents banned for literally everybody on the planet. The archive has a striking scope. The overall extension of its shelves with documents account for 52.8 miles. Yeah, those are miles, not feet. 25 miles of them is occupied by mystic literature alone. What's more, there's also a theory that it's exactly in this archive where the authentic Bible original is kept that may fully change our perception of Christianity. And there's more. Another theory says that the Vatican archive contains documents confirming that Jesus Christ did really exist and leave offspring. Needless to say, the church will never uncover these data. This is explained by the following fact. If revealed and direct descendants of Jesus Christ are found, the believers will instantly trust them, listen to them, and turn to them for help, not to the pope they elect. As a result, the papacy will be useless. Besides, theorists think that the archive stores secret works of Leonardo da Vinci. Keeping in mind how genial Leonardo was, I won't be surprised to find rocket drawings, spacecrafts, some electrical technologies or secrets of Egyptian pyramids. What's more, as the theorists think, the archive contains real memoirs of many historical figures, manuscripts with eternal youth secrets, as well as documents describing the real history of our planet. If this information becomes publicly known, people learn the truth, and how long they were cheated, the world can get really chaotic. We can call the Vatican Archive documents treasure at least for their value. As a whole, the Vatican is an utter treasure in itself. Palaces, museums, temples, unique works of art, sculptures, and painting. The Vatican swims in splendor. The Sistine Chapel alone deserves a special notice. It goes without saying that the ceiling in the chapel Michelangelo decorated is a work of art, one in a million. Tourists come there to look at this beauty with their own eyes. However, there are such treasures they'll never see. At least, this is what theorists consider. Possibly this archive or some other place keeps artifacts considered invented, mythical, or lost in the whole world. For example, according to some theory, you can find the Holy Grail in the Vatican, a cup Jesus Christ savored his Last Supper from. The cup collected Jesus' blood from his injured body nailed to the cross. A man is considered forgiven for all his sins, gains immortality, and different benefits after drinking from the Holy Grail. Who knows, maybe the Grail is really in the Vatican and used by some notorious local priests to get rid of their sins. Another theory says that you can also find the Ark of the Covenant in the Vatican, the most important relic and sacred thing. The Ark is considered to keep the Tablets of the Law, a pot of manna, and Aaron's rod. It's thought that the Ark possesses supernatural force and invests its owner with unlimited opportunities. What if it is exactly due to this Ark and other treasures and relics in the Vatican that they drive out demons so skillfully, invoke a devil, or do other incredible things? If all that's true, of course. It seems to be that after all you've heard about the Vatican, it's hard to imagine what else the state can hide. There's more. One of the most exotic theories says that there's a device in the Vatican with the help of which you can move in time. This is not quite a time machine, but something looking like it. It's called a chronovisor, and it's supposed to be created by the monk and physician Pellegrino Ernetti. The chronovisor cannot move one into the past, but it reproduces pictures of historical events, recording them in the form of photo shoots and audio recordings. If the rumors are to be believed, Ernetti could see several important events of the past the Trieste Opera in 169 BC, as well as the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. What's more, it's thought that Ernetti even managed to take a picture of Jesus. Some are sure it's a trivial fake, whereas others suppose this is a real shot as well as the device. 
Unfortunately, in this story we have to rely only on narrations and rumors. There is no authentic proof confirming the existence of this invention. It's incredible how many intrigues, mysteries, secrets, and dark matters are concentrated in the Vatican, the smallest country on the planet. In this respect, anti-record size is only a plus. Many are sure that the Vatican is literally no figure in politics and attends to only its religious affairs. At the same time, there is also a theory, according to which the Vatican is almost the biggest player on the political scene. I'm talking it's exactly the Vatican that led to many famous events on the planet, including wars. In 1914, the Vatican signed a deal with Serbia, and a month later the Serbian Gavrilo Princip killed the Crown Prince of Austria-Hungary, Franz Ferdinand, which became a reason to begin the First World War. Was it a coincidence? In 1933, the Vatican concluded a treaty with Germany and strengthened its influence on the territory of the state that would unleash World War II several years later. Was it a coincidence again? The theorists consider that it was exactly the Vatican that fomented the wars, pursuing its own goals. Possibly it was about the instillment and spread of Catholicism. Write in the comments what else, in your opinion, the Vatican can hide. Leave a like and subscribe.